Hi honeys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat. Today I am having a fab day and it is time to start hauling the books I got in November. I obviously am going to do probably three haul videos. This is the first of two where it is strictly thrift store hauls. So we have 23 books to get to today. We're going to do fiction, poetry, historical fiction, and nonfiction today. Part two will have other genres. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And yeah, let's start this haul. So let's start with fiction. So first up is A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. Uh, this is a Swedish translation following a crotchety old man who everyone thinks is like really sour, but then you find out why he's that way and apparently it's really tender and heartbreaking. I also picked up Eileen by Otessa Moshbeg, who also wrote My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which I really liked at the beginning of this year. Um, she has a very distinctive way of writing about women that is like viscerally gross. So I'm intrigued to see more of that in here. I also got Ocean Sea by Alessandro Barco, who is an Italian writer. And this is following a seaside hotel where you follow the points of views of different people that are staying there. Um, it just sounds great. And I've read Barco before and loved what I read. And this is one I never heard of before, but the cover and the title really totally captured my attention. This is The Vivisector by Patrick White. So at first I was like, is this like some sort of torture book? So it's actually following uh, a painter who I believe is bisexual. It says the men and women who court him during his long life are above all the materials of his art. He is the vivisector, dissecting their weaknesses with cruel precision until he meets his match, who is an adolescent child who prompts him to reevaluate his life. So I don't know. It just sounds so intriguing. And for $2, I could not leave this gem behind. I want to know why the cover is so dark and what is inside of this book. So next up is Tequila Blue by Rolo Diaz, uh, who is a Mexican writer. This is following a corrupt cop in Mexico City and how he gets up to being a corrupt cop who is trying to do good. I also picked up Normal People by Sally Rooney. Now I have been avoiding this book because I just really don't think it's for me. I <laughs> really don't think so. Everyone is like, it's great, you should read it, it's great. But you know when you get a vibe and you're just like, I just don't see myself liking that and then people will probably be annoyed that I don't like it. <sighs> but it was at the store for $2 and it was in, it's in brand new condition and it still has the mark on it from when someone bought it for $20. So I was just like, okay, I'll give it a go. And if it doesn't work out, it's only $2. So yes, I have normal people. And no, I don't know when I will get around to reading it. Next up is one from Canada that I bought because of um, Books and Lala. So this is Hatchet by Gary Polson. Honestly, not a fan of this cover at all, but this is a survivalist book featuring a young boy in the Canadian wilderness, I think, who has a hatchet, I'm pretty sure. So I do really like wilderness survival stories, and I think this is middle grade, judging by the back blurb. Um, so I will see if I like it or not, and if not, it was only a dollar. And next up, High Fidelity by Nick Hornby, and it's about, I think, growing up and coming into adulthood. Yeah, I'm just really ambivalent about this one, so let me know what you think, because I think I heard it was great, but not sure. And the next one is an author I have read before and really liked. So this is La Rose by Louise Erdricht, who is an Indigenous American author. So this is following an Indigenous community, and one day a man is out hunting, and he accidentally shoots and kills a child from another member of the community, and in exchange, he gives that family one of his own children to raise as their own. Um, I loved her writing style in Future Home of the Living God. If that had been out in the thrift stores, I would have snapped it up immediately. I really enjoyed it. And this one I think is going to be very hard hitting. It is quite a chunky one, but also I think it's going to be really good. 
and I can't wait to read it. And the last three in the fiction category are all ones that I have read before, but I really liked them, so when I saw them, I do want them for my permanent shelves. First up is Loyalties by Delphine de Vigan. This is a French translation following a teacher who believes that two of her young male students are headed for trouble or already may be in trouble, yet when she brings it up to the parents, they are very resistant and push back against what she's saying and you're really not sure what's happening because there's some extenuating circumstances and this was quite good and I really recommend it. Um, I also got Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. You're following a girl who is on a, an excavative reimagining of historical life during like the stone age that her father is running and things get weird and dark from there. I really appreciate its weirdness and I want it for my shelves. And the last one I picked up for fiction is The Choke by Sophie Laguna, who is an Australian amazing writer. So this is following a young girl in a small town in Australia. She has severe dyslexia. She doesn't really fit in that well at school and she is being raised by her grandfather who is a veteran with PTSD. Her mother is not there and her father is rarely there and so she really doesn't have that great of a support system and it's her growing up in this small town and how people care for her and also forget about her and let her slip through the cracks. It was heartbreaking, it was heartwarming and I highly recommend this one. Um, I really do think Sophie Laguna is an amazing writer and I know that in December I'm going to be reading The Eye of the Sheep for Bias Breaker, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. So next up, let's talk poetry. This is the portable Walt Whitman. Um, I really like portable editions of poets because you get a sampling. So I'm very much looking forward to this and I would like to read some Whitman and check it off my bucket list. So just keeping it completely honest, historical fiction usually isn't my cup of tea at all. But while I was thrifting, I kept finding amazing historical fiction gems that I really wanted to pick up because I've either read the author or it just looked really interesting. So first up is Bodies of Light by Sarah Moss, who if you remember, wrote Ghost Wall. Family of idealists in Victorian Manchester. So Allie's father paints beautiful women while her angel evangelical mother visits the slums and campaigns against child prostitution, teaching Allie and her sister May to live for others. While May likes to pose for the artists in her father's circle, Allie devotes herself to her mother's ambitions, working hard to join the first generation of female doctors. But bitterness and tragedy divide the family, and Allie leaves home to escape the subtle terrors of her childhood and begin a new life in London. For some reason, that sounds great to me. I know that everyone is screaming, you don't like family drama sagas. Yes, you're right, I don't. So, I'm still keen, I'm still interested, but um, a bit nervous. Next up is a super interesting one. This is Fire in the Blood by Irene Nemirovsky. So I was looking at the author blurb and she was Jewish and fled from Russia um, to hide out during the war in German occupied area of France. She hid in a very small village and she ended up writing this and pieces of this were in a briefcase that was found after the war other pieces of this were given to a family friend and editor. Um, however, she was discovered and unfortunately sent to Auschwitz. Um, and after the war, this was published under the title of French Suitcase, but in um, English, I guess it's titled Fire in the Blood. Um, and it deals with the life and secrets of different families and lovers in a small French village during and after the war. So I think that this is such an interesting novel and I can't wait to read it and I usually don't read things that are set around the wars um, just for like mental headspace reasons but it is short and also it's very intriguing to me knowing the author's history. I also have another Louise Erdricht. Uh, this is Tracks and this is set in North Dakota in the early 20th century when the indigenous communities there are fighting to keep hold of their land. Uh, so again, normally I don't know how much this would be intriguing to me because historical isn't usually my jam, but it is an author that I know I really like. So 
That's why I'm interested. So the next one I have for historical fiction is The Good People by Hannah Kent. She also wrote Burial Rites and I really enjoyed it. It was very cold and very like remote feeling. So it says, rural Ireland, 1825, three women gather to save a child who I believe the town thinks is a changeling. So I'm getting really good winter vibes from this. We also have Bog Child by Siobhan Dowd. Um, and this is about a young boy. So he's digging for peat in the mountain with his uncle Tally, I believe in Ireland. And he ends up finding a frozen child who had been murdered. And from there they go to find out like what happened to the child, who the parents are, and who unfortunately murdered the poor child. So I think it's very interesting and also horrifying. Like I hope it doesn't give me nightmares because who wants that? Like digging in a garden, digging in a mountain, and then there's just like a body. It's scary. And then the last historical one I have is Perfume um, by Patrick Suskind. So I had this a while ago, I think either in Korea or Japan. We moved and I got rid of it because I didn't think I needed it anymore. But I actually think about perfume quite often. A few of the scenes were so visceral and so sensory that I like relive them. I'm like thinking about them sometimes. So I really wanted to have it and this was just a gorgeous cover. So I was really happy that I found it. And now I have it on my shelves. Okay, and we are to the last section, which is nonfiction memoir. So first up is Sky Burial by Xin Ron. Uh, this is about Tibet. So this is about a Chinese woman who has been searching for her missing husband for 30 years. And I think she traveled by foot through Tibet and through mountain ranges looking for him for like decades. And then a journalist stumbled upon her and they kind of teamed up to tell this story. So I think it just sounds really excellent and I don't think I've read anything from Tibet. So very intriguing. I also have The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind um, by Brian Mueller and William Kamkwamba. William Kamkwamba is who the book is about. When William was young, he invented all of these things to help his village, uh, such as like a windmill and things that generated power. And he just did it like on his own. Like he wasn't taught about it or anything. And I know about his story because I used to teach the TED Talk um, in South Korea to my students and it was excellent. So I'm really excited that I found this and I can't wait to read it. We also have a science one about microbes. This is The Invisible Kingdom by Aiden Ben Barak, who is an Australian writer. Uh, yeah, so I have a bit of germophobia. I don't like to touch things that a lot of people have touched and that was even before COVID. So um, I am kind of thinking this might help me or just terrify me forever. So we'll see. And the last one that I'm gonna haul today is Under the Tuscan Sun, A Home in Italy by Frances Mays. So actually, fun fact, I thought that this was a romance. I didn't, I didn't read the blurb on the back because I was like, oh, I've seen that movie. That will be cute for when I need a pick me up read. Yeah, well actually this is a memoir about someone actually living in Italy. So silly me. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the video here. Lots of love. Bye.